Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome along to this afternoon's BCP Planning Board. My name is Councillor Kelsey and I will be chairing this meeting this afternoon. Before we move over onto anything, I will ask Mr Tyler from Democratic Services to go through the housekeeping rules. Mr Tyler. Thank you, Chairman. So uh, please note that this meeting of the Planning Committee is being recorded by the Council for live and subsequent broadcasts and will be published on the Council's website for a minimum of six months. In order to ensure the meeting is managed effectively, please could everyone present follow these ground rules for speaking. Only speak when invited to by the Chairman. Always turn on your video function when invited to speak. State your name before you speak if you have not already been introduced by name. Please mute your microphone when you are not talking. After the committee has heard from the planning officer and received written statements from the public and ward councillors, the chairman will ask committee members who wish to speak to do so by utilising the raise hand feature in the bar at the top of their team's window. The messaging bar should not be used unless you are raising a point of order or providing the wording for an amendment. If at any point you would like to speak again, please use the raised hand feature again. The chairman will ask each member in turn how they wish to vote. And just a gentle reminder, once you've made your uh, statement or asked your question, um, if you don't want to speak again, then please just uh, click the raised hand feature to, to lower your hand. Thank you. So finally, please ensure background noise is kept to a minimum and that mobile phones and other devices are turned off or switched to silent for the duration of the meeting. Thank you. Um, thank you. Chairman, are you happy for me to go to item one of the agenda? Please do, Mr Tyler, thank you. Thank you, Chairman. So with item one, we have apologies. For today's meeting, um, we have received apologies from Councillor Simon Bull and subsequently item two, substitutions. Um, Councillor Simon Bull um, will be replaced by Councillor Kieran Wilson for this meeting. Thank you, Chairman. I'll hand back for item three. Thank you, Mr. Tyler. Declarations of interest. Does any member of the committee have any declaration of interest? Could you please indicate by raising the hand, please? Uh, Councillor Barron. Thank you, Chair. Um, I, have, I have a local interest. I'm so strongly against this item, item A, should I say the sloop, on the agenda that I could not possibly say I have an unbiased view. So I will refrain from the debate and the voting. However, I will be speaking against the application as the Ward Councillor. Thank, Thank you for your honesty, Councillor Barron. I appreciate your um, stating that. And Mr Tyler, could you make a general note of that, please? Certainly, Chairman. Thank, Thank you. you. Confirmation of minutes. Could I ask the committee if they are all entirely happy for the minutes to be signed and that they are an accurate record, please, of the meeting on the 15th of October. I have no hands raised there, so I will take that as confirmed. Thank you. And we will move on then to public issues. And the uh, after the officer's presentation, each individual application, I will refer to the Democratic Services Officer, in this case, Mr Tyler, to read out any written statements before we hear from any ward councillors who wish to speak. So we will move on. The first item we have this afternoon is item 6A, which is the Sloop 5 Commercial Road Pool. And I will ask the officer in charge of this one this afternoon, which is Kate Robson, if she would prepare her screen for the viewing of this meeting, please. Thank you, Kate. Thank you, Chair. I'll just bring up the presentation. Before I do, um, we have received two late representations to add to the two that are listed um, in my report. Um, they uh, both object to the loss of the existing pub, but don't raise any new issues beyond those that are stated um, in the report. Thank you, Kate. OK, so the application we have in front of us. Kate, you need to share your screen. Sorry. Thank you. That's fine. Thank you very Thank much. Kate. Sorry. No, um, Thank you. The application we have in front of us is um, the Sloop Public House at Five Commercial Roads in Pool. Um, it's an outline application to demolish the existing pub, including the outbuilding and two flats, and erect um, 74 flats um, in its place. 
uh, comprising 61 beds, nine two beds and one three bed. Uh, the location of the sloop is uh, just to the north of the Civic Centre uh, gyratory system here in Poole. Um, sorry, just to go back, uh, outline application, we are considering access, appearance, layout and scale. Only landscaping is reserved. The specific location, uh, we have the Civic Centre to the south. Um, the dwellings of North Road um, run to the north of the site. To the west, we have the college and a row of shops. Some um, images of the existing um, public house for you here. Um, this is a fine example of a Victorian public house, which is recognised through its locally listed building status. Uh, there are many um, nearby heritage assets, um, which I've shown for you on this um, map here. The sloop itself is highlighted by the um, red circle. Um, a joint, um, on the adjacent site is the um, bank, uh, former bank, the facade of which has been retained in the development that's being um, constructed there. Um, and then further to the west of that is the uh, clock tower. Uh, to the um, southwest, we have the civic offices, and I have um, included an extract um, of uh, from English Heritage of the um, specific part of the Civic Centre that is listed. Um, you can see that in the bottom um, right hand corner. Um, we also have a uh, pool park conservation area, which extends a little further than the historic park and garden. Of the pool park conservation area is the thicker black line um, running um, adjacent to the sleep site. A summary of the nearby developments that um, are surrounding the area. The sloop site is the red star uh, towards the central top. To the north of that, we have a small flat development at one north road. Adjoining the sloop site, we have one to three commercial roads, which is now being known as the Cosmopolitan. And I have some images coming of um, how far that development has progressed. Um, on the opposite side of North Road to the Sloop is um, Park Place that has extant and live planning permission, which hasn't been um, uh, commenced. The planning permission has been implemented, but no construction works as yet. Um, and then uh, to the south of the Civic Centre um, system, we have the um, converted and extended um, police um, building, which is known as the Metropolitan. Uh, some up-to-date pictures here of how work has progressed at the adjoining site to um, the sloop. The um, bank facade of this um, building was retained, but it is, it is difficult to see it under the scaffolding and wrapping at the moment. Um, looking at the scheme under consideration, the um, CGI gives um, a good overview of what is proposed. Um, we have a total of six floors recessing, recessing towards the top. Uh, the main entrance is to the corner of commercial roads and north roads. Um, materials are stone, render and bronze cladding. Um, the site plan um, is shown here. Uh, the vehicles will enter on the um, stretch of North Road running to the north of the site. Um, and you'll also note there's some realignment of the um, footway and um, highway um, in two places to sh uh, slow vehicle movements down um, into the site. Uh, moving on to the floor plan, um, the, uh, the ground floor plan shows that this is predominantly parking um, as well as the lobby entrances. Uh, the main lobby entrance um, on the corner of Commercial Road and North Road, and a second one off the northern part of North Road, um, along with um, bike stores for residents and visitors um, at both locations. And you can also see that there's a narrow band of landscaping proposed around the edge of the site. Quickly scan through the um, remaining floor plans 
and you can see them recessing um, towards the upper level with the fifth floor being the top floor proposed. These are the um, elevations um, proposed. And this one shows um, the site in context with the uh, development that's being constructed at one to three commercial roads and the extant planning permission at um, Park Place. So this would be the view if you were standing um, outside the civic offices here in Paul. Um, there are many issues involved um, in consideration of an application on a site such as this, with much weighing of the pros and the cons uh, required. I won't repeat the entirety of my case officer's report now, um, but I will summarise the main issues. The site is located in a sustainable transport corridor where the local plan directs the majority of developments. The application involves the loss of a community facility, i.e. the public house. In light of the struggles of a number of tenants and the number of other pubs within a half mile um, radius of the site, uh, the provision of nine discounted market sales units is considered to provide a substantial community benefit to outweigh this loss, thus meeting the requirements of Pool Local Plan Policy PP26. The proposal does involve the total loss of a fine locally listed building. Historic England has confirmed the building does not meet the requirements to be statutory listed, but did conclude that the building is clearly of a local interest as a public house of long standing, hence its local listing. The proposed building is a high quality design. Elevations are well proportioned with strong elements of symmetry and reflect the classical architecture of the Civic Centre estate. The proposed building would preserve the setting of the listed building at the Civic Centre, the pool park conservation area and the historic park and garden. The amenities of neighbouring occupants will be preserved and those of future, future occupants is satisfactory. Due to some realignment of junctions on North Road, the scheme would enhance highway safety. Appropriate levels of parking for cars, motorbikes and cycles are proposed. The District Valuer Service has confirmed that the scheme cannot provide affordable housing. The scheme is only viable at a reduced profit margin. This is separate from the discount market sales units that are being offered um, to offset the community facility. Um, and that is a matter that the um, profit margin there is a matter for the developer. Uh, requirements including biodiversity, enhancements, renewable energy and housing for ageing populations have all been demonstrated to meet policy and can be secured by condition. This leads us to the pl planning balance and the conclusion that I have reached and recommended to you. In my view, the community benefit of nine discounted market sales units is sufficient to outweigh the loss of the existing community facility. In my view, the strong design of the building in conjunction with the provision of 72 additional dwellings in this highly sustainable location are sufficient to outweigh the harm resulting from the total loss of the locally listed building. Finally, if members are minded to approve the application, uh, then I would advocate the addition of an additional informative advising the applicant of the need for highway works um, to be subject to a section uh, 278 agreement under the Highways Act. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Thank Kate. You. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Tyler, Tyler, could you indicate any um, speakers either for or against, please? Certainly, Chairman. Thank you. So for this item, um, we have not received any specific objections uh, or written statements in objection. Um, we have received two written statements in support of the application, and they are from Mr. Matt Annan of Pure Town Planning, who is the agent, and Mr. Mark Adams of AJ Developments, who is the applicant, as well as obviously Councillor Steve Barron, who is the ward councillor speaking on this one. So I will proceed now to read out Mr. Matt Annan of Pure Town Planning's uh, statement of support. Good afternoon, members. Myself and the applicant wish to address the main considerations and clarify why planning should be granted today in line with the officer's recommendation. Firstly, loss of the community facility. Whilst the sloop is a is considered by officers to be a community facility, the locality is not short of pubs. There are at least 10 pubs within a 10 minute walk away from the site in Ashley Cross. The loss of this particular pub would thus not have a detrimental impact on the provision of such community uses in this area. 
Furthermore, with the recent changes to the use classes order, the pub could be lost to a shop or offices under permitted development. This is material planning consideration for decision makers. Throughout, throughout this planning process, it has been demonstrated by the brewery owners and applicants that the pub on site is financially unviable. Prior to this application, despite numerous measures and significant investment, including a full refit and creation of a new garden area, the pub has continually struggled due to a variety of factors. Mitigation for the loss of the community use is provided in the form of nine affordable units. The floor area of these units reflects the area of the public house being lost. It has been concluded by your officers that these nine affordable units would provide a significant benefit to the community and their retention will be secured in perpetuity by a Section 106 agreement. Secondly, loss of locally listed building. The existing building on site has been heavily altered and renovated from its original historic form. Members should be aware that the building was put forward for national listing, but Historic England it was not of listable quality as both the architectural and historic interest of the building did not meet the criteria. They stated the building has limited architectural merit that marks it out as anything other than an early 20th century public house. They added it has no historic pub fitting there are no known internal features of note. The building thus does not have any statutory protection. On the determination of the appeal on the neighbouring site at numbers one to three com commercial road, which are 80 flats currently under construction, the inspector made reference to the sloop stating, it relates poorly to surrounding buildings and stands somewhat isolated. The sloop contrasts with the local context and the existing building has been heavily altered and renovated from its original historic form and so is not worthy of retention. Thirdly, the principle. Policy PP2 of the Pool Local Plan sets out the locations considered suitable for residential development. The majority of development will be directed to the most accessible locations, which includes locations within sustainable transport corridors such as this. Thus, the principle of additional residential development on this site is therefore acceptable. That is the end of the first statement of objection, and I will now read out the second statement of object, uh, sorry, of support. The current application is the culmination of three and a half years of work. The original pre-app was submitted on the 3rd of April 2017 from the first application during the intervening discussions with officers and all throughout this current second application. The scheme has gone through many revisions. Our architects and planning consultants have worked closely with your professional officers, which we thank them for, providing them with the additional reports to assist with their consideration and incorporating officers' suggestions and requests. This ultimately has meant that there has been no strong objections from local residents attracting only two short letters. All these factors have contributed to this innovative and exciting new scheme receiving the recommendation to grant before you today. Following on from Pure Town Planning's deputation, we, we give you point four character. The layout, scale, massing, appearance and use of materials, the building is in keeping with the evolving street scene. As noted by the planning and urban design officer, the elevations are well proportioned with strong elements of symmetry and reflect the classical architecture and material palette of the civic centre, resulting in a proposal of high quality design. Fifth, residential amenity. The proposed building is a sufficient distance from all surrounding residential properties such that this scheme will not appear visually intrusive or overbearing when viewed from any habitable rooms or amenity spaces. Furthermore, the proposed building, uh, the proposed built form sits well with the neighbouring development under construction at numbers one to three commercial road. Lastly, highways. As set out in the officer's report, the proposal would enhance highway safety and provide appropriate levels of car parking and bikes in accordance with policy PP35. 
In summary, the loss of the community use has been fully justified and mitigated. The building is not covered by any statutory protection. The National Planning Policy Framework does allow for the demolition of locally listed buildings where there are community benefits that outweigh the loss. The benefit on this scheme includes the housing delivery of 65 residential units, as well as the delivery of nine affordable units. Not only that, but the proposed development achieves the three overriding objectives of sustainable development, namely social, economic and environmental. The scheme will deliver multiple housing units in a highly sustainable transport corridor and represents a significant financial investment to the area, generating additional income for local shops, restaurants and services at a time when they really need it, and secures a highly energy efficient building that meets the needs of the wider community for housing. It achieves all this whilst not detrimentally impacting on the character or appearance of the area nor materially harming the amenities of any neighbouring properties. Such proposals are actively encouraged by the National Planning Policy Framework and your adopted local plan. Councillors, I hope you agree with your planning officer and her team leader's recommendation to grant permission on this application and vote in favour of approving this proposal accordingly. Thank you. So that is the end of the second statement in support of the application. And I'll pass back to you now, Chair, to invite Councillor uh, Steve Barron. Thank you. Thank you, Mr Tyler. Uh, before I go to Councillor Barron, I have to apologise. At the start of the meeting, I failed to ask all persons present to introduce themselves. Um, I won't do that now, but just to welcome Councillor Wilson, who is substituting for us today. I believe this is your first uh, meeting since BCP Council, so welcome along as substitute. And also to point out that Councillor Decent has now joined but because he's the first part of the presentation, he will not take part in any debate or voting on this particular item. Councillor Barron, would you like to present your case this afternoon, please? Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Members, I doubt any of you had on your election manifestos, vote for me and I will support locally listed pubs being demolished. But that is what is being asked of you here today. Uh, Chair, is it possible to share the photo that I... Yeah, it's great stuff. Thank yeah, you. it's up there already, Councillor Good stuff, yeah. Sorry, look at my notes. Um, the Sloop has significant local history. A public house that sat on the site before 1753. The present Sloop was built in 1824. So the 1899 photo that you see now is actually modern in comparison to the pub's age. The pub's name is from a smuggler's sloop which was full of French brandy which washed up there in a storm. There is actually an old tea winch in the, in the, in, in the, in the cellar of the pub um, which is still there to this day which was used when the pub was on the coast to lower items into the cellar. The fact that the building is on a local list means that its conservation as a heritage asset is an objective of N and PPF, the National Planning Policy Framework, and material consideration when determining the outcome of planning applications. I'm incredibly concerned that when the former Paul Borough Council created the Paul Park Conservation Area, they didn't include the sloop. Considering areas are places of special architectural or, or, or historic interest, which have a distinctive character or appearance worthy of preserving or enhancing, Considering it's the oldest building by far and predates the park, it seems very strange that it doesn't include it. Indeed, Historic England themselves have asked for the sloop to be include, included within the conservation area. I would have quoted Councillor Bartlett when he said on a previous uh, committee, what's the point in having a conservation area if we don't conserve anything in them? However, the proposed clearly does affect the conservation area, so it is still a major consideration. The argument about the building not being viable as a standalone pub doesn't hold much weight. The Shah of Persia, New Inn, Fleet Bridge and Grasshopper are all busy. And they're in areas with a lower residential density, especially when all the, 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 the buildings completed uh, nearby. 
There are already major builds going on within the Park, Park Gates area. It is looking very likely that municipal buildings, the law courts, car park could all be developed for housing. With all the new residents, it will be great. Sorry, all the new residents will be grateful of a community hub is important and respects heritage assets and the community hubs like this one for people to socialise in. Um, where people are supposed to meet and socialise outside the news agents on the pavement. Um, the local plan PP26 states development that would lead to the loss of such premises will only be permitted where there are proposals provide sufficient community benefit to outweigh the loss of the existing facility. To try to argue that that is the case, we're adding for a few affordable homes is a fair community trade off for losing a community hub is absolute nonsense. And, and the local plan PP30 states that developments affecting locally listed buildings should enhance or better reveal the significance and value of the site within the street scene and wider setting. I would very much like to hear how knocking it down enhances the significance. We should also consider what the historical bodies had to say. Historic England. The Sloop House is an attractive building probably built in the 20th century with comparatively little alteration. It contributes to the local character and distinctiveness and in our view should really be included within the boundaries of the adjacent Paul Park Conservation Area and be on the local list. Its pro pr proposed demolition is to be regretted. They also stated the building is clearly of local interest as a public house of long standing. The Society of Paul said, object to this proposal which fails to respect the character of the long standing established public house. The Council for British Archaeology, we strongly object to this application because it will result in substantial harm to a heritage asset through its total demolition and we strongly recommend that this application is refused because there is little clear convincing justification for the development and the local planning authority should therefore give great weight to the scale of harm that the pre-app advice of its conservation advisors appears to have been ignored. We recommend this application is refused. And then we've got the Her Majesty's Planning Inspectorate the Sloop is a locally listed brick building. It features some attractive architectural features typical of a good quality Victorian building. However, this is contra to the heritage impact assessment paid for by the developer, which states the architectural interest of the pub was found to be negligible. And regarding the biodiversity report, well, it's fairly obvious to me that the bats didn't pay the invoice. Um, I feel it's an apt time to quote a Hilliard Bellic. From the towns, all inns have been driven from the villages most. Change your hearts or you will lose your inns and you will deserve to have them lost. But when you have lost your inns, drown your empty selves for you will have lost the last of England. BCP Council needs to send out a very clear message to developers. Leave our listed buildings alone. Members, I respectfully ask you to do the right thing and refuse this application. And Chair, would it, would it be OK if I was to read out a few comments that I've received, please? As long as you're quick with them, Councillor Baron, that's okay, fine. Okay, well you, you stop me because there is a lot. I will just keep going and when you uh, when you give me the nod, I will stop. Okay. Okay, so we've got uh, Pat Brown. Hall and Woodhouse would sell their granny. Um, well, I'd like to think they wouldn't. Um, they certainly are selling the family silver and once it's gone, it's gone forever. Um, we've got Shirley Hibbs. It's absolute madness for it to be demolished. Corinne Peckham, so sad that once these parts of our history are gone, that's it, never to be seen again. Melanie Cook, such a shame. With a little bit of love, it could be a great pub. Del Sherwood, with all the building going on in this area, I'm sure the pub would be would do well in the future. Catherine White, 
surely if the pub was improved or even run better, it would be, be used more. Not a good move, and with all the flats, surely people will need somewhere to go. Linda Wickham lands, probably just the line in someone's pocket, absolutely no merit to the proposal. Mark Allen, with all the flats either in the immediate area or under construction, police station, quarter deck, Lloyds Bank, ex-registry office and other offices, surely this is a ready-made new market for inviting for an inviting well-read pub. Sorry, well-run pub. Sue go to bed. Unfortunately, there are certain councillors who are apt to destroy the name of Paul and its long history. Jason James, stop destroying local pubs. For centuries, they have been landmarks and a big part of local communities. Michael okay. Cox. Councillor Barron, could you make the, one, the last one? That would be great. Thank you. Yeah, OK. Well, well I, I'll leave it there. Thank you, Thank Chair. You. Thank you, members. Thank you, Councillor Barron. And Thank I believe you. you are now going to leave the meeting for the rest of this application. Yes. Uh, Kate, is, is there anything that you would like to come back on? that you have heard already this this afternoon. Hi, can you hear me, Chair? I can, thank you, Kate. Right. Um, nothing specifically. I think I just wanted to clarify something in the one of the supporting um, statements. Um, I don't believe the um, use class of the pub could be changed under the revised use classes order. Um, I'm just checking and um, Drinking establishments are now sui generis, which means any change of use would require planning permission. So I did want to clarify that. That's great. Thank you for that. Um, nothing else at this point. Thank you, Chair. OK, thank you very much, Kate. Appreciate that. So, members, I will now come to you. Uh, first on my list to speak is Councillor Anne Stribley. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Um, I'm also board councillor for this area. Uh, before I make any comments, I've got a few questions. I'd be grateful if we could have clarified. Absolutely. Um, first of all, we were told there were going to be 72 dwellings. Then we were told there were going to be 65 flats and nine affordable flats, which makes 74. So do we actually know how many flats we're looking at? There was reference to nine uh, marketplaces or some such in Kate's initial um, presentation. And I was taking that to be uh, sort of commercial units on the ground floor fronting the street, but that appears not to be the case. And we're told that there are appropriate levels of parking, um, but we're very carefully not told how many. So could I have those clarified before I speak, Chairman? Certainly. Kate, could you answer those, please? Hi, yes, I certainly can. The, the application is for 74 dwellings. The net increase is 72 because there are two flats within the pub building at the moment. Fine. Of Thank those you. 74 dwellings, nine are discounted market sales units. Um, in paragraph 64 of my report, um, it states that the application proposes 48 parking spaces. Um, the With two of those being car club scheme spaces, which Highways has advised replaces five cars each. So we've calculated the parking provision at 56 spaces, which is a parking ratio of 0.76 which is just short of the unallocated parking guidance of 0.8. Um, so there is a slight shortfall and I've stated in my report that it's three spaces across the development. Uh, was uh, that, I think that was everything. Yes, thank, thank you for that. Um, I won't uh, go into what um, Councillor Barron has said on this because um, we're not necessarily on the same page on the issue, but I do have serious concerns about the overdevelopment of this site, because that is what I believe it is. I passionately believe that any site clearance and redevelopment, and I'm not in general uh, uh, against that here, but I believe it should never provide less 
than the standard requirements. And to be told we are parking spaces short in a brand new development, uh, I, I think is totally unacceptable. We may well have people using their cars less often, but I don't think we will have fewer people owning cars. I accept that it's on a bus route. So if you're going shopping in Pool or maybe Bournemouth Town Centre, then you might well take the bus rather than have to cope with a the car there. But people will still have their cars. They still want to use it and use them. And I am concerned that uh, we are have a shortage on car parking, probably to squeeze in additional um, flats. The, the numbers are huge. When you add the um, 74 here to the 80 adjacent on this very small island site with one vehicular access to the north to provide for both developments, uh, I think it is going to be uh, not uh, well organised or well planned in that respect at all and, and I have serious concerns. Also, can I have assurance that all the flats, regardless of whether they are discounted um, financially or not, that all of them meet national minimum standards in all respect, because we apparently have amongst these, we have four studio flats. Now they just mean one room with your kitchen at the end and, you, and one end and your bed at the other. Uh, in, in normal terms. So I I believe the developers, I, the, the outward design, I don't have too much difficulty with, but I think they're um, trying to squeeze a quart into a pint pot. And I do believe at this time that it that, that is overdevelopment on this site. We should have um, more parking. It should be well up to standard and preferably a few spaces over the minimum, not under. I think there is absolutely no excuse for going under. And also look at the um, arrangement of the building. It's called North Road because it is to the north. So the flats on the eastern side, on the North Road frontage, will only get morning sun those uh, on the commercial road frontage will get late morning and early afternoon sun. Any others that are facing inwards or to the north will really get no direct sunlight at all. And I'm, I'm really concerned about that and the, if you like, the living conditions that we are approving, hopefully for the next 50 or more years. Um, one would hope that people's uh, living environment will be improving in the future and not diminishing. So I'm not entirely assured that, that this is the case. But if I could have a an answer to the to the size of the apartments and are they all well up to minimum standards, please? Kate, could you answer those, please? Yes, um, no, not every single unit meets um, minimum standards. The majority do. Uh, there is nothing in the government's technical housing standards for studio apartments. Um, so, um, as it, you know, as I did state in my report, most of the units exceed the minimum gross internal floor area. I don't have a specific figure now. I can get that as to how many are below the um, standards. Please do. Um, but I would also just remind um, members that there is nothing within the pool local plan requiring um, development to meet these government's technical standards. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I do have to come back on that one, Chairman. Uh, national standards supersede any local plan. Um, we, we've had our local plan in place for a while. I think national standards have come in since then. National standards trump everything. And to suggest that we should be build, building below national standards, I'm not a, against the principle of this redevelopment, but I am against 
it if any apartment is um, substandard and I'm against it if it is below um, our agreed prov provision for parking. And I think it fails on both points. So thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Stribley. Councillor Stribley, I will just have to come back on one point that you made there. As far as I'm aware, the national standards do not trump the uh, local plan at all. And at this moment in time, similarly to the Bournemouth local plan, neither preceding authority had actually adopted the government's local, uh, the national standards of size. So therefore, we do not have to abide by them. They are, I believe, the inspectors prefer it, but it is not um, not a definite thing for us to have to do. I, I hear what you say, Chairman. I don't agree with you on that point with respect. To with respect I, I know Bournemouth and Poole are taking that stance at the moment, but I have a real issue with it. But thank yeah, you very I, much. I understand, Councillor Stribley, I too would like rather they were, but as I say, legally at this moment in time, we are not obliged to stick to those uh, national standards. Uh, Councillor Lepedevin. Thank you, Chair. Um, I, I, before I pass any comment, which I probably won't do at this stage, I, I want to ask a specific question um, for more information from Ms Robson or probably actually Mr Smith, because it's a, a transportation issue, um, to clarify and go into more detail about the car access and egress arrangements. Um, as has already been referred to, this is half of an island site. There's reference to the entrance, the car entrance being shared with the uh, work going on on the old bank site next on the other half of the island site. Um, could uh, either Miss Robson or Mr Smith give us more clarification about car access arrangements um, on this, as I say, island site? Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. I will ask Mr Smith, I believe you are in the room with us this afternoon. Could you clarify on that, please? Yes, Chair, can you hear me okay? We can, thank you, Mr Smith. Yeah, just uh, just a couple of points, perhaps. Uh, yeah, the access will come out onto North Road, as can be seen on the site plan, uh, and then vehicles will have to turn right uh, because you can't exit left at the south end of North Road. It's buses only, so vehicles will come out and turn right. Uh, North Road is reasonably wide at that point. Uh, vehicles will then, uh, to the northwest corner of the site, you can see a pedestrian refuge, they'll exit again onto North Road to potentially come out onto Commercial Road there, as you can see on the plan, or go, go north. And those roads are wide and, and meet appropriate standards. Uh, the trip generation from the site is, is, uh, is not, it won't be excessive in our view. There is obviously a pub on the site already, which could, uh, if it was a popular pub, generate significant vehicle movements over a day, a high turnover of cars using the car park. Uh, so I, I think, on, as I said, our view is that the roads in the area can uh, happily cope with the uh, that standard. I wondered, Chair, whether I could come back on, on the, the parking uh, ratios and uh, how, we, how we, we come to our decision on the parking. Uh, Mr Smith, I'm absolutely fine with that. If it clarifies okay. points, then that will be helpful. Thank you. Yes, I think uh, Councillor Stribley referred reference to a minimum parking standard. I would just clarify that RSPD doesn't have a minimum parking standard. It refers to an optimum standard and therefore what we look at each individual application on its own merits. And what we have to look at uh, in respect to this site, which is three spaces short of our guidance, th those three parking spaces short would lead to such significant safety harm that it would warrant uh, refusing the whole application. Uh, you know, we, we considered the fact that the site is located next to a, a bus hub. It's not just on a public transport route. There is a bus hub just outside the college uh, to the, to the uh, west of the site. Uh, which has many bus, buses uh, visiting that bus hub, giving uh, routes to many areas of the borough. Uh, it's a relatively pleasant walk to the town centre through the park as well, so that's a good route. Ashley Cross is only 10 minutes away. So in terms of sustainable lake location, it is one of the more highly sustainable locations. And uh, with securing of a car club on the site as well, uh, that's in the conditions. Condition number nine refers to a car club. That will again encourage residents to have uh, low car ownership and less reliance on the car and, and a number of the units are studio units as well which again in terms of the type of people who, who would move into those type of units you, you don't uh, generally get uh, sort of families moving in there where there's a higher reliance on, on the car so taking all those factors in our view three spaces short it would be difficult to sustain a higher refusal reason just for those three spaces short 
Thank you, Chair. Thank you for that, Mr Smith. That was really helpful. Councillor Pedevin. Uh, Marion, you're on mute. Sorry, I shouldn't have put my hand up again. I thought I was wanted to query something, but I, I don't. It's uh, been clarified. Thank okay. You. Thank I'll you. comment later, probably. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, Councillor O'Neill. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Um, I, I understand the policies are under review currently with the merger of the three uh, areas, uh, Bournemouth, Christchurch and Bourne. I only hope that uh, whatever policy emerges, we have more ambition and a better consideration of the comfort, longevity and well-being of our residents. Because I do believe that being anything less than the nationally prescribed space standard uh, leaves a lot to be desired. However, I do have some questions uh, to be clarified. Um, I'll discount the questions on number of units and parking spaces because they have been. Could uh, the officer give some confirmation about bike storage, waste management, and whether or not EV charging points are included within this uh, development? Thank you. Thank you. Kate, could you answer those, please? I could. Sorry if I was um, messing around with the screen then. Can everyone... Is it, I think it's OK. Um, bike storage, waste storage and electric charging points. Um, bike storage, there are... ..66 spaces across the site um, for secure cycle parking. Uh, 40 within a bike store within the car park, which is accessible from both the car park and externally. 26 within a bike store adjacent to the sub, um, southern lobby, and they're using a two-tier cantilever system. Um, in addition, within the main lobby building, there are um, six bikes um, and, sorry, six further um, bike stands, and then a, an additional four to the front of the building, which are more geared up to be used for um, visitors. Um, waste storage, um, because of the size of the development, um, it's um, the developer has proposed underground um, bin bins, which is um, in line with our um, requirements. So there are um, six underground bins of 5,000 litres each, and our environmental services team has advised that that would be appropriate, and they are split 50-50, recycling and refuse. Um, I don't believe there are any electric charging points proposed. Um, I mean, this is something we could um, we could look at, but um, as far as I'm aware, there there aren't any at this point. Thank you, Kate. Councillor O'Neill. Thank you, if I might. Um, thank you for the clarification on those points, uh, all of which are very valuable. I do believe with the progression of the electric car, we need to start considering as a region how we're going to handle that. So I think it's very appropriate that I was asking. I do have some other concerns, um, some of which have already been touched on. One is the aspect of the development to its next door neighbour uh, of six floors, because I do believe that this will leave uh, much of areas in shadow for parts or a major part of the day. I have some concern over the dominance of the building uh, with regards to the development of that whole area, but also of the housing behind. And I think uh, Councillor Stribley was absolutely right to raise the potential of the excessive density of buildings should this proceed. Um, it has been mentioned that there is a, a major bus route which is reassuring and a terminal which hopefully can take people to many areas other than Bournemouth and Paul. Um, I would comment, however, the owners of the pub, hall and woodhouse are seeking to sell it on with planning permission to increase its saleability and value. And no, no doubt with the bar in mind, and it's interesting the building alongside is not dissimilar. I actually understand this as overheads are pushing retail prices, particularly pub prices, uh, for on-premise consumption. And this at a time when it's, uh, it's true that home entertainment is, green, uh, is growing as homes themselves become centres for leisure. And drinking at home has become more affordable 
with off-premise drinking far more economic. Indeed, the pubs or the brewers themselves are developing their brands and their home sales operations uh, with a range of products in both bottles and cans. The economics I do get. However, also within 10 minutes of this proposal, 10 minutes staggering distance, one might say, or two minutes in a car, is a vibrant centre called Ashley Cross, a centre where there are many pubs and eating facilities and an area where many naturally gravitate to. I'm not against the sale of the pub and I understand the heritage argument and we should not be forcing owners to maintain unviable assets unless they can be converted to success or another use. However, I still remain against this proposal for the following mentioned reasons. I think the size of apartments is a serious consideration as we progress. I think there is potentially a lack of parking space because there is a lack of parking space in the area for current developments. I am concerned of the mass of the development and its effect on near or soon to be near neighbours. The excessive density of the building, should this be passed, is also of concern. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Councillor O'Neill. Uh, Councillor Bartlett. Yes, yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, first of all, I'd like to clarify the point about um, that's made on paragraph 44, if possible. And, and um, it talks about uh, the use of uh, use class regulations and changes to them. Is that saying that if somebody wanted to change the use of this particular uh, the pub to something else, it can do it. It's, not, it's now easier to do it. But I think Kate initially, initially said that, that that didn't apply, but the report seems to suggest it does. Could you just clarify that point? Because it's actually key. It's a very key point, this, because if somebody wanted to just change it into a supermarket, we had no control over it, then probably we'd all be looking to, to, see, to see the flats built. But um, uh, so it really is quite an important uh, point. Could you just clarify that, please, uh, Kate? Please, Kate, if you could. Thank you. Yes. Um, no, so there's two different issues here. The pub under the revisions to the use classes order that came in on the 1st of September is now sui generis. So that the mm. pub would require planning permission to change to anything. Um, the point I was trying to make in my report is that um, a lot of the other community type uses, such as children's nurseries, now all fall within class E. So it is much easier to find premises for these other types of community facilities. And children's nursery is the one that we see a lot um, struggling. It is a lot easier for those to now find premises because um, there is because a lot more uses fall within class E. So they don't require the change of use that they normally do. OK, does, so does clarify. What's, what's the applicability to a pub then? Um, it's, it's reference to the other types of community uses that the building could be used for. OK, all right, thank you. Um, I was interested to see in the report, there's no comment or from the council's heritage officers. There's consultations with all sorts of people, but nothing from our own council's heritage department. Could you just explain why that is? Thank you. Um, yes, we, we um, as part of um, my role within development management, I do seek consultations from obviously external um, bodies, um, other divisions of the um, the, uh, the council, as well as um, team members within the planning department. Um, I did seek. Um, high, um, heritage comments and our heritage officer is understandably um, opposed to the demolition of the locally listed building. Um, it is not common practice, um, certainly within the reports I've been preparing, to um, list those comments out separately. Um, I include tree comments, urban design comments and heritage comments within the body of my report. Um, the My role is to then take those comments 
and place the balancing exercise um, of the application that is in front of me. Um, okay. So, yeah. Okay, thank you. But I, I do think that if our own heritage department uh, feel that uh, they can't support the application, then it should be stated very clearly in the report. And in my experience, that's normally what happens. Um, but um, just just moving on, um, just and I, I agree with Councillor Stribley entirely about the parking. Now, my understanding is that uh, car share arrangements are offered in mitigation to an application where it's not possible to provide the required standard. Uh, in this case, it is possible to reply uh, uh, to provide the required standard, so there's no requirement to mitigate it. What we've got here is a mitigation measure being used as a primary means of meeting the requirement, which frankly is absurd. The other issue, of course, is that um, uh, car sharing provision is a commercial arrangement. There is no there is no way of enforcement with that if the commercial provider goes um, uh, becomes insolvent or doesn't wish to provide the service and of course by that time if, if you're stuck without somebody willing to provide the service you're stuck with a shortfall and actually the shortfall here is not three it's actually 13 which is mitigated by the provision of two cars that's a mitigation it's not a primary uh, uh, way of meeting the requirements um, and then just moving to the um, to the size of the apartments uh, the report says that most uh, are, do meet the national prescribed standard. Well, most could actually be half or just one foot, one more than half. Uh, so, you know, uh, it, you know, just to use the words most, I mean, just how many are? Uh, and it's quite important because it could be 20, it could be 25 that do not. Um, so I think it's important. I'd also take exception to the point that Yes, it, whilst it may not be adopted standard, probably by the time this building is built, it will be, because we're not very far away from uh, agreeing a, um, uh, a conurbation-wide local plan. Certainly, already in other areas of conurbation, the national prescribed standards are being used and are influencing planning decisions already. We should carry on with that vein in the knowledge that they will be adopted in the future local plan. And I understand the letter of the law now is that we can't, but it would be, I think, unreasonable not to take that into account, particularly as this is, if, if when they go ahead, those standards would be uh, would be in place. Um, so I think I'm probably there there. Uh, I, I'm not opposed entirely to the development, but I do say, you know, it, I, I think there's a real issue about the, the residents in the area. You know, it is quite a long stagger, actually, to all the other pubs. <laughs> and I certainly would hate the thought of it being a fairly short driveway <laughs> in the same in the same voice. But, um, yeah, I think the other the other public houses are quite a way off. And once, uh, you know, all these additional residential places start being used and who knows what's going to happen to the, the civic centre, etc., uh, you know, I think there probably would be a need to have somewhere that people are very near that like to pop in and and socialize and it and these kind of uh, pubs do provide a community center uh, they do actually provide a, quite a benefit to a community when they've got somewhere to gather like that otherwise the place becomes very soulless and and i also think it's a great shame to be disposing with a with a, a uh, a building that does have this heritage to it and is recognised formally by it being listed locally. So I think it's very it's very glib actually to say, well, the loss of that can be can be overridden by the requirement to sell nine under uh, flats under value to make them affordable. Well, actually, they're still not affordable. They're still going to be very very expensive. Uh, so um, I, I really don't think that it might have some small benefit to those that are buying them and they still will be private flats, but I can't see that being a, an overall community benefit whatsoever. Uh, so I think you're probably getting the drift here that uh, I'm probably not going to support this application. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Bartlett. Members, before I go on, whilst we all may quite agree with some of the comments made, particularly regarding space standards and, and such like, 
I think we must remember that today we are dealing with this application that is in front of us and we have to deal with it uh, to all intents and purposes in the policies that we have at this moment in time. We do not, uh, we are not allowed the foresight of what might come forward in the future as much as we all may wish, myself included, that we do adopt space standards, but we must concentrate on what is in front of us and what we are dealing with today. Uh, Councillor Hilliard. Thank you, Chair. Uh, yeah, th this planning, this BCP planning committee uh, over the last year and a half, we we've seen many good reports like this, balancing the pros and cons of a heritage asset. Uh, just two questions for the officer, please. First, first of all, so I think it was in July we saw the Paul Pottery site, and that that is actually in the heritage conservation area. This is just a locally listed heritage asset. If the officer just could confirm that. And then the other quick one was the report seems to just identify two addresses of objection. So two letters of objection. Uh, obviously, we heard from the councillor Barron that he, he's obviously had more personal correspondence, but has the officer, can the officer confirm formally we've only had two objections? Thank you. Kate, over to you. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you, Councillor. Um, so yes, I, uh, the Paul Pottery site um, is in um, the uh, Paul Town um, conservation area. So, uh, um, and it was not a locally listed building. This site is a locally listed building outside of a conservation area, but adjacent to the Pool Park conservation area. So quite different contacts um, for, for the consideration of um, both buildings. Um, uh, yeah, different, sorry, different types of conservation areas um, and different status of the buildings. Um, in terms of the letters of objection, yes, when I drafted the report, we had two letters of objection. Uh, we have since received two more, so total of four now. OK, thank, thank you for clarifying that. Any further questions, Councillor Hilliard? Not, not from me, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Johnson. Thank you, Chair. Um, I find myself rather, rather torn on this one, really, because I hate to see local local pubs and things like this go in my wars we have an estate that is bereft of a pub and you can clearly see the deficit that that has on the local community um however having read through the policy and the way the policies are worded i would have to um completely agree with the officer and they're they're working their workings out effectively on how this all plays out i think that it will be a dreadful shame to see this building and this and this pub go but if, if it is not seen as currently commercially viable, we cannot save it on the what ifs that in the future it might become commercially viable again. That's not that's not what the policies allow us to do. Um, regarding the parking, again, having read the policies the way it is worded, um, allows for the officers to do exactly what they have done and weigh up the pros and cons. And, and happens. I want to agree with them in this potentials do not see that they can sustain a car or two cars on the site they will not buy it and if the developers uh, as professionals as they are do not think that there will be enough people to buy these flats who don't have cars who don't rely on a parking space on site then they wouldn't be suggesting that they build it so as much as i do not want to say i have to say that on the whole the process that the officer's decision is the correct one, and therefore I will be supporting this application. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Johnson. Uh, Councillor Stribley, you wish to come back again? Uh, yes, thank you, Chairman, if I may, and, yes, and I will also make a proposal. I think the number of objections to any application is not relevant. There are not many uh, residences in close proximity to this. There's a, there's a row on the south side of North Road, uh, but there aren't many people living very close to this site at the moment, um, and it's the value of the or the of the objection, not the number, which is what we should be looking at. Um, 
Councillor Bartlett, I think, made some extremely good points. We still haven't been told how many of the apartments are below minimum standards. We do know this is an outline permission for the site to be sold to developers. So I, I have no doubt whatsoever it will come back. And therefore, I think the substandard parking provision is totally inexcusable at this point. We might well get a developer who comes back and he might be one or two spaces short, but he won't be 13 short, which in effect this one is. We have in the past in pool given planning permissions for substandard parking on the officer's recommendation that a car club will mitigate all difficulties. Well, the only car clubs I know of have been totally unmitigated failures uh, and the parking has been a disaster. In this area, there are no on-street parking places within a reasonable walking distance. The north side of North Road is blocked solid with cars because many of those properties don't have their own garage or other access. Already National Express, who use North Road as a route, together with the buses, have problems and have asked for parking on the road to be reduced. And many of the residents on, the, on North Road in that first section will tell you they have had their win, um, wing mirrors knocked off on endless occasions and some simply don't bother to uh, replace the wing, wing mirrors anymore. So I, I would like to propose, Chairman, that we refuse this application on a number of grounds that it is over development of the site. Some apartments being below national minimum standards whether we can put that in or not, I still uh, believe it's relevant. Think, but Councillor Stribley, would you like to classify that in conditions? Uh, I'm perfectly happy to, to take your advice, yes, on that, Chairman, and, and also the wording. Inadequate parking provision, which at this point I think is totally unacceptable. Loss of a national heritage against PP26 and um, a few discounted units do not actually uh, meet our affordable housing requirements and if anybody has any further reasons for refusal i'd be quite happy for those to be added thank but you, i Council don't know if i have a seconder chairman thank you councillor stribley we will soon find out um, councillor o'neill you wish to speak no, i was just going to say i'd second that proposal we add mass density uh, to, the, to that long list, which I think is very valid. Thank you very much, Councillor O'Neill. Uh, Councillor Lepodovin. Thank you, Chair. Um, I said I'd probably come back with comments later, and, and, and I'd like to now. Um, listening to the comments that have been made, um, I also share the disquiet at the loss of a heritage building but um, we've also got to look at of economic viability and um, it if we are told uh, and I take it at face value or not that Hall and Woodhouse have made a lot of in investment there to try and get it uh, to be a, a successful and viable operation and and it hasn't become so uh, it's difficult to speculate with all the additional housing accommodation that's being built, what the future will be. And, and you can't put things on hold indefinitely just to wait and see. The design uh, visually, I think, is, is going to be in keeping with the other developments going on around the area. Um, so on balance, I think I will be supporting it. But I'd like to take up the point that Councillor O'Neill was making and ask if we could condition having electric charging points included. I don't want to specify a number because I have no idea what would be appropriate in a development of this size, but no doubt Mr Smith can uh, advise on that. Thank you, Councillor Um Councillor Bartlett. 
Yes, thank you, Chair. I'd just like to draw attention to paragraph 52 of the report, which says uh, that quotes local plan policy PP30 uh, states that developments affecting uh, locally listed buildings should enhance or better reveal the significance and value of the site within the street scene and the wider setting. The proposal would therefore result in the total loss of the asset and its significance and would conflict with policy PP30. So if you wanted a, another reason why we should be turning this down, it's in direct contradiction to policy PP30. Thank you for that, Councillor Bartlett. Um, I will come back to Councillor Stribley. Are you happy for those to be added to your move, Councillor Stribley? Yes, Chairman, I'm very happy and very grateful for the support of the other members too. Thank, Thank you. you. Kate, is there anything you would like to say before I move to a vote on this? Uh, no. Thank you, Chair. OK, so we have a move by Councillor Stribley and seconded by Councillor O'Neill to refuse this application on relevant points being P it's going against PP30, uh, living conditions, mass overdevelopment, lack of parking, and the loss of a locally listed building, which is PP26. We have that move. I will call your names in turn, and if members could indicate either for or against, please. So I will start off with Councillor McCormack, Vice Chair. Excuse me, Chairman. Yes, please. Mr Gould's put his hand up. Has he spoken? No, sorry, Mr Gould, I did not see that. Thank you, Chairman, good afternoon, members. Um, thanks for, for bringing me in just before you went to the vote. I was just wanting to just sort of uh, just get a bit of more clarity on these um, suggested reasons for refusal, which which you've you've outlined. Um, I think, um, and, and again, uh, Miss, Mrs. Robson might be able to advise, um, we'll probably need to include reference to the Heathland policy um, and the, the Pool Harbour um, policies as well and any reason for refusal so we'll, we'll need to provide the relevant policies to that yeah um hearing some of the councillors concerns around the proposed building um the the scale of it the overdevelopment the excessive density and i think it would also be prudent if we put one of our townscape policies design policies in from the pool local plan that would deal with that side of the considerations okay um, and um, I'm, I may have missed it, but we've we've had a, another reason for refusal relating to inadequate parking. Again, yes. um, that we have the need to um, add a parking um, policy into the reason for refusal. Right. And with regards to PP26, loss of locally listed building, Mr. Gould, you're okay with the wording on that one? Yeah, and I think we've also got the um, Councillor Bartlett, I believe it was, um, yeah. helpfully intervened and also suggested the use of PP30. He did, yes. Which obviously talks around um, non-designated uh, uh, heritage assets, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, thank you for that, Mr. Gould. We'll add all those in as well. So, members, are you all happy with those reasons for the refusal notice? Yes? Okay, so in that case, I will go... We'll go to the vote and I will start with Councillor McCormack. Against. Councillor Barron, sorry, uh, Councillor Bartlett. Uh, four. Uh, Councillor Wilson. Four. Councillor Peter Hall. Four. Councillor Paul Hilliard. Against. Councillor Johnson. Against. Councillor Lepedevin. Against. Councillor O'Neill. Four. And Councillor Stribley. Four. And I myself would also be four on those notes at this moment in time. Mr. Tyler, could I have the numbers, please? Certainly, Chairman. Thank you. So the total number of votes for the motion is six. The total number of votes against the motion is four and there were no abstentions, so that motion has carried. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Tyler. Therefore, members, that application is refused and therefore will approve or notice. Thank you very much for everyone that took part. That was a very good debate on that one. Members will notice that neither Councillor Davies nor Councillor Decent took part in that. That is because they missed part of the application being told to us at the beginning. 
We will now move on, ladies and gentlemen, to the second application this afternoon, which is being presented to us by uh, Mr Gould, and that application is Durley Chine Depot, West Undercliff Promenade in Bournemouth. Could someone ensure that Councillor Barron is back with us, please? Yep, here, Chair. Thank, Thank you, you Councillor Barron. Just opening the champagne. I will not say a word, Councillor Barron. I, I am jesting, obviously. <laughs> Thank you. Over to you, Mr Gould. Sorry, Chair, I'm just having a technical problem here. Can you hear me? I can, Mr Gould, yes. Thank you. I lost my little screen there. OK, can we confirm that we can see the front screen yeah. of the presentation? Thank okay. you, Chairman. Good afternoon, members. OK, we move to the next item on today's agenda, which is Durley Chine Depot, uh, which is located on the West Undercliff Promenade in Bournemouth. Um, members can see the description of the development, which is for demolition of four buildings, um, which include a public toilet block, a former beach office, a storage block, um, porter cabins and uh, 11 beach huts and it's proposed to construct a new two-storey environmental education visitor centre, staff welfare building, a cafe kiosk and replacement public toilets. Um, I'll start by showing you an aerial uh, photograph of the area just by way of context. Um, the site is uh, circled in red and just to the east we've got Bournemouth Pier about one kilometre to the east we can see the BIC and then just to the west we've got Alum Chine Beach uh, looking at a location plan of the site, again, by way of context, we have got just to the uh, south and west of the site, we've got two existing eateries. We've got the Harvester pub and we've also got Chineside, which is a fairly recent um, cafe restaurant. Um, we have the public car park up the hill here. Uh, the development site is this area here, so this rectangular area here. And then just stretching back slightly into the, the existing council yard. We can see the cliff obviously behind. Um, this brings it into more lifelike context. So again, here we can see the existing site here and this element here, the western yard of the depot. We can see the cliff behind. <clears throat> Just uh, coming in a bit closer, uh, we can see the um, beach huts that will be removed. This is an existing RNLI um, station which is um, set up above the, the promenade on the top of a retaining wall and you see a number of other buildings that will be demolished. Uh, moving on to the proposed front elevation plan um, on the side or the right hand side as we're looking at it with our back to the sea the uh, proposed education and welfare building which is two-storey and then moving across towards the left the western side of the site we've got a number of um, ancillary uh, structures set beneath this projecting canopy um, which is a green seed and roof with also um, solar panels set within um, there's a number of what look like beach huts within the site those are display pods there will be seating there's a cafe kiosk here and then there's some uh, proposed replacement public toilets. Um, looking at a, a ground floor sort of layout plan, um, again, starting on the eastern side, we can see the footprint of the two storey educational building. In behind that, along that western edge of the existing depot, we can see some storage units. This um, area up here behind is where the existing RNLI um, station building um, is currently located. Um, that is obviously to be removed. Um, there's a number of ancillary structures in, in, in this central area under the canopy. Display pods, as previously referred to, seating. Here's the kiosk. And then these are the toilets tucked away towards the back left-hand corner. Um, a, just a quick plan of the proposed roof. Uh, again, we can see there's a green seed and roof proposed. And the grey rectangles obviously represent a number of um, solar panels. Looking at the elevations, uh, this is the uh, east elevation facing towards uh, Bournemouth Pier. Um, 
Um, the top image shows you in a slightly wider context. These are those storage units that I referred to that are in behind that two story building. And then the bottom image is the same as the top, but you'll see that this screen here is removed just for clarity so that you can see that what the ground floor element looks like. Um, looking back the other way now, so with our back towards Pool and looking, uh, so, sorry, um, sorry, looking to the elevation that faces west towards Pool, we can see the um, the depth of the building. We can see the uh, angled nature of the seed and roof. We can see the taller element in the background. We can also see the context in relation to the adjacent um, triple SI cliff that is uh, behind the building um, and the existing retaining wall. Um, these are the floor plans and elevations of the proposed kiosk and public toilets, which I've previously referenced. And again, a, a similar drawing to the one I just showed you uh, looking at the west elevator, but this is a section through the development again, showing it in the context of the promenade, working from right to left back towards the, the cliff behind. Um, and I've already shown you that um, uh, slide. That's the, the main front south elevation. Um, and I'll leave that there just whilst I sort of briefly explain the proposals. So we've already established um, what will be demolished and, and what the proposed development comprises. But just to recap, the proposals involve a single storey um, toilet block, a cafe kiosk, a two storey passive house building and other ancillary elements such as bin stores, display pods and seating. Um, the existing structures um, on the site um, are not particularly attractive. They're very, um, they, in fact, it could be argued that they detract from the visual amenities of the locality. So therefore, the principle of their loss is considered acceptable by your officers. Um, the existing depot that we saw in some of the aerial photography uh, will remain. Um, in terms of the scale of the buildings, um, the buildings are single and two storey in height and they will sit comfortably in this context. Um, they will remain subservient to the cliffs that rise up behind. And you know, we, we can see just, just to the west of the site when I reference the two eateries, I believe that one of those is two storeys in height. Um, the two storey element is set as far back into the site as possible. This is to reduce its impact on the promenade and the, uh, the open sort of vis vista you get as you walk along the prom. Um, some of the sing single storey elements do project slightly further forward than the line of beach huts adjacent, but their subservient scale and how they will be read in conjunction with adjacent structures will safeguard the visual amenities of the locality. These elements mainly comprise the steps and the ramps and bin storage areas for use by the general public. Um, the materials that are proposed are sympathetic to the coastal setting, so there's a use of timber, seed and roof as previously mentioned, and they also reinforce the sustainability credentials of the development. Um, obviously the site is um, on the beachfront, um, so you would think that obviously there's a risk of flooding, but actually the site is located in a low flood risk area, primarily due to its elevated position um, above the beach and the ocean, um, and, and even the promenade. Um, there is a risk of some overtopping um, of waves onto the site in stormy conditions, but there's been no objection from the council's coastal team or the environment agency. And this is in part due to the programme of beach maintenance that the council undertakes to ensure that um, the, the, the beach erosion is, is, is maintained and that this doesn't have a detrimental impact upon the promenade and development beyond. There's a condition um, at number three of the report that requires the preparation of a flood warning and evacuation plan. Um, and condition eight will deal with surface water drainage and suds. Um, in terms of ecology, um, the uh, application was accompanied by um, reports um, looking into the presence of protected species such as bats and other um, animals uh, that you would find in a beach coastal setting. Um, it shows that there was no presence of bats on the site, and this is in part mainly due to the fact that, that most of the buildings that will be demolished are single storey and have flat roofs. There are some presence of lizards and invertebrate on the triple SI cliffs which are in behind, but in fact it could be argued that this scheme will result in enhancement to the ecology of that nearby triple SI because it will remove the elevated RNLI building, which is located on the higher ground, um, immediately adjacent to the triple SI, and it will also then put back native planting um, in its place. 
As I've previously mentioned, there's also a seed and roof, which is again a positive aspect of the development that will increase biodiversity. In terms of highways, there's no objection from your highway officers and there's an adequate level of cycle parking provided at the development. In terms of sustainability, um, the scheme is born out of the Council's declaration of a climate and ecological emergency um, in 2019. It seeks to demonstrate and educate people on the impact of single use plastics and littering and what that has on the coastal environment. Paragraph 43 of the report sets out the eco credentials of the development, which far exceed policy requirements. Um, I know, Chairman, um, that there um, may be some concern about the loss of the RNLI station and what is going to become of that. And I can inform members that there is a, a, a separate planning application currently within the planning department for um, a, a separate development at Joseph Steps, which is um, just along the um, prom from, from where we are here. And that is um, the description of the development reads, it's alteration extensions to building to provide lifeguard facilities, um, including a boat storage training meeting room. So the uh, the loss of the RNI facility from this site is compensated for in, in that other development, which is currently under consideration. Um, I think that covers it for now, Chairman. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Gould. Uh, Mr. Tyler, do we have any people wishing to speak, please? Thank you, Chairman. Uh, yes, so for the public statements relating to this item, I can confirm that we have received no statements in objection and one statement in support, which was received from the applicant, in this case, BCP Council. There were no uh, ward councillors that wished to speak on this matter. So I will now proceed to read out the one public statement in support from the applicant. The proposed Durley Environmental Innovation Hub will be an inspiring new public education destination located on the BCP Seafront. The site was identified in the 2013 Seafront Strategy as an opportunity to deliver the Council's planning policies through a well-designed development, Policy CS5, in addition to retaining and enhancing Bournemouth's attractiveness as a tourist destination and location for economic investment, policy CS30. The development will be a centre of focus for BCP Council's efforts to educate and change behaviours along the seafront. This year, more than ever, the amount of rubbish left on the beach has been apparent, and the ne negative impact of this upon both the environment and Council resources is a key focus of this proposal. The Coastal Communities Fund provided a £2.4 million grant to deliver the hub in 2021. It will provide education facilities and interactive displays currently being developed in collaboration with Bournemouth and Southampton universities. A new kiosk and toilet facilities will support the development of the destination and welfare facilities for essential services linked to the waste transfer yard will also be provided. Beach hut tenants on the site were given notice under the terms of their lease to enable the site to be prepared. The fisherman has been relocated to Middlechine and the lifeguards relocated to Joseph Steps. The new toilet provision will be in accordance with the, th with the seafront strategy and needs to be considered together with the new cubicles at Chineside. The strategy was developed following extensive public consultation. Six new unisex cubicles will be provided in the hub, together with an additional publicly accessible WC in the welfare building. There will also be separate toilets for staff use in the education welfare building. Together with the new Chineside cubicles, the toilet facilities provided in the hub will replace the old block with a more efficient modernised toilet provision in line with delivering the aims of the seafront strategy. Investment in modernising toilets is a key priority and providing individual unisex cubicles creates a more efficient and cost effective solution with a higher turnover of users. The quality of the building has also been carefully considered. The development will be built to high environmental standards taking into consideration the whole life cycle of the building. In the education building, we are targeting a zero carbon strategy 
and pass passive house accreditation. The public will be able to access the site and see this working example of a high environmental quality build. The two storey building, which houses the education and welfare rooms, has an important role as a visual beacon to create a destination and encourage footfall throughout the building. The design ensures that safe access along the prom will be maintained. That is the end of the statement and concludes the public statements for this item, Chairman. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Tyler. OK, members, is there anyone that would like to kick off the debate, please? Yep, Councillor Hilliard. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, just uh, a few questions, two, three questions, please. First of all, the uh, one, one of the complaints is that there's not going to be a replacement freshwater tap, if, if the officer could confirm that position. The other thing is, were all the beach hut tenants who were uh, had to vacate, have they been offered alternatives? And then lastly was, it, it's the Durley Chine Road. Is, is there sufficient for a bus turning point if, if it is like for school trips and things like that? Thank you. Thank you. Mr Gold. Thank you, Chairman. Can you hear me? Yes, thank you. Um, dealing with those points from Councillor Hilliard, um, the point about the beach hut tenants, I think, um, was um, addressed in the deputation by the applicant. Um, in planning terms, it's not a material planning consideration. Um, we have to look at the merits of this scheme. What the council decides to do with, obviously, the beach huts that it's removing is, is, is the concern of, of that other relevant department. So um, I wouldn't want to encourage members to attach too much weight to what, what we're doing in another department to rehouse those members. Um, I, I honestly don't know the answer to whether there is a freshwater tap um, that is going to be made available. I would like to think if members felt that was um, a, a desirable or a nicety that um, we could we could incorporate that into a condition and I'd like to think that the applicant could live with that. Um, in terms of um, the um, the access turning arrangements, um, I, I can't categorically say whether a bus can turn. Um, what we do know is that the highway officers have looked at it and they're not raising an objection to the scheme in highway terms and that would obviously cover, cover parking and um, accessibility and turning and manoeuvring arrangements. Um, okay, so yeah, that's fine. For now, Chairman. Yeah, thank you for that. Thank you, Mr Gould. Thank you, uh, Councillor Hilliard. Uh, Councillor McCormack, Vice Chairman. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, no, no questions from me today. I, I, I just thought I'd like to make some comments around. Um, um, I, I'm quite impressed with this application. It, it, it takes the practical use of um, a waste transfer station, educational facilities, the economics of the kiosk, public toilets, um, and, and, and it's all done very, you know, it looks very, very nice as well. And, and even the, um, the environmental stuff, returning some of the land behind it uh, back to the cliff face. Um, and, it, and it all does it all looking very, very nice and should improve the, the seafront. So um, I think I'd be minded to su support this application today. Thank you, Councillor McCormack. I, I agree with everything you said on that. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Stribley. Um, thank you very much, Chairman. Uh, I don't have a problem with this in theory. Um, could you tell me the size of the nearby public car park? And is it usually at capacity during good weather and the summer? Um, I have been to Durley Chine before, but not for some considerable time. And of course, I haven't been able to visit on this occasion. So if I could hear that first. As far as I'm aware, Councillor Stribley, it is quite a large car park. It is always busy, but there is also a lot of free parking which is no more than probably five minutes walk from from this part of the beach beachfront okay um thank you i'll i'll take your word for it i thought it was a rather a long walk down to um Derley chine but uh, perhaps it isn't as long as i remember <laughs> um i i have no problem with the the principle etc there what I do have a problem with, and I think the council is going to have to look at it very carefully, 
with the uh, the promenade is a promenade and that actually is a place for a leisurely walk or stroll um, unfortunately this summer it has become a very dangerous place for many pedestrians because of the way some cyclists behave on there and the congestion and the speed that they go uh, so my question really is the promenade there wide enough to allow um, reasonable social distancing at any point between cyclists and pedestrians um, because I am concerned about the congestion there and bringing perhaps a large number of additional people down um, to, to use this as an educational centre whilst very laudable uh, could cause problems of conflict between other users along the promenade there. Mr Gould. Thank you, Chairman. Um, just, just to pick up on a couple of points that Councillor Stribley's made there, um, I don't have the exact number of car parking spaces that are available, but on the slide that I've just put up, members can see on the left-hand side here, you can see the bottom end of the car park, which stretches right down uh, virtually to the beach front. Um, there must be circa 100 plus spaces in that car park as you go back up the hill. Um, to pick up Councillor Stribley's point, about the, the the potential conflict with the, the proposed building and the use. Um, the uh, the West Undercliff Promenade that runs along here is, is in fact effectively like a highway um, because it obviously provides service to the seafront um, uh, vehicles that use it, so tractors that, that uh, comb the beach and bin lorries that service um, you know the, the depot. Um, and so it, it, it is as wide as a normal road in that sense. So um, I think I touched on in my the earlier part of my presentation that there is a small projection um, of the proposed building in front of this line of beach that's here. It's by about a metre. So um, it will not impact at all on that road, um, which is effectively a road down there. So I, I, I don't foresee this development causing any um, difficulties around social distancing and, and pinch points along the prom. But if it is protruding in front of those beach huts, it will have an adverse effect on those beach huts, which will be in shade from about 11.30 midday onwards, if the um, building projects ahead. Yeah, um, I, I take your point, Councillor Strubby. I'll, I'll go to another plan in a moment, but okay. looking at my cursor, you'll see that this building here, if you, if you take the line down there, that, that's roughly where the edge of the development. So there, there will be a natural separation gap because obviously you've got vehicles entering and leaving yep. that retained okay. depot. So um, the impact of, of that two storey element with the, you know, coupled with that separation distance on beach huts, which don't have side windows and have south facing views would be no different, I would argue, than probably the relationship you've got here between the, the, the harvester and those beach huts. In fact, it's probably better. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor O'Neill. Uh, thank you, thank you, Chairman. Can I ask uh, the officer, what is the square footage or the size of the development and how much of that is dedicated to the education facility? Mr Gould? Um, I don't have an exact square footage um, in front of me. Uh, chairman, um, but I can see on the plan um, if if I appreciate it might not be very clear for members, but this is the two story element here that you can see I'm outlining the footprint of it and it's in here it's described passive building and I believe if for want of better eyesight circa 156 square meters. All right, and is the when you say two story is that two floors and yes. Is the exhibition itself sited on the ground floor or the upper floor? Um, you're looking at the, uh, the, the the plan in front, in front of us at the moment, uh, Councillor. The ground floor appears to be more sort of functional and operational. There's a number of toilets. There's obviously a, an arrival lobby area. I would imagine that the educational side of it will be upstairs. Um, and then outside, under the canopy, we have these purple pods, which is again where the, the applicants will be looking to put on displays for members of the public that will be able to openly access this part of them. And, you know, I can imagine they might cram one of them full of cans that they've collected from the beach just to graphically show how much litter 
we're taking off of the beaches. Yeah, my, my, I suppose I'm, my concern is, is I, or question, and it's a gener, uh, general one, is, is the exhibition itself too narrow to be successful? I'm not saying it's unimportant, um, but we are looking at making an investment of public monies at a time when finances are stretched and investment requires some form of economic sense and assured, uh, assuredness of its viability. I'm not sure about this. Uh, I'm open-minded at the moment. But what I would have liked to have seen uh, is really an exhibition as an environmental centre. And why not include planning and how it affects health and well-being, sustainability and green energy? A living and developing exhibition and learning centre rather than a display of cans and plastic. But in so doing, let us bring local government to life and site it at or near the civic centre. If the target is schools, bring them to the centre of local government, government, show them what good governance can achieve, and by so doing, gain their real interest in what a dynamic council can achieve. Let's excite their passion, and who knows, we may even see some younger councillors coming through. The I other... Think, I think the other um, the other thing that concerns me is the car parking, which has been mentioned. It is a long, narrow car park from the main road down to the beach. Um, the beach end, quite rightly, has a number of disabled parking bays. If coaches are to go down there, that does concern me because you can't swing round. There's not a good turning circle in that car park. Uh, having... <laughs> reversed in and out a large car on a number of occasions i know that to be true and particularly when there are pedestrians there uh, and not least families moving their children and all the paraphernalia to the beach so security or safety is a concern the plan also mentions as part of a justification the kiosk and the toilets however i would remind all that there are better located facilities at the car park the Durley Inn was mentioned earlier, which is a harvester, but that also has a beachside kiosk. And the Chimeside Cafe, recently opened, has a takeaway facility, a full catering downstairs and upstairs on its terrace, plus it has public toilets and a beach office attached. So at this juncture, I think the idea is very good. I'm not sure about its of uh, viability on an ongoing basis and whether the weight of its exhibition when it's a choice of families to go to the beach or go and view some plastic and cans although we all understand the importance it worries me thank you chairman thank you councillor o'neill uh where are we sorry i've lost my stream here Councillor Pe councillor peter hall Councillor Hall? Yeah. Councillor Hall, are you there? Yeah, I'm there. Should yeah, be. Yeah, your, your turn to speak. Right, thank you very much. I think it's an excellent scheme, well designed, and I'd be certainly supporting it, especially as it's, and I think it's fantastic having an edu environmental education visitor centre. I think that's what we need in that area. And I think overall, it's going to be a vast improvement to what's there at the moment. So um, if anyone hasn't proposed it, I'd like to propose that we agree as set out. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Hall. Councillor Toby Johnson. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, Councillor Hall's uh, beaten me to it there. I was going to say exactly the same. Uh, just to come back on a couple of comments against it that I've heard, I think that, well, for one thing, they wouldn't have to choose between uh, going to the beach and uh, and going to view a bunch of cans, as as was said, because it, this is on the beach. Uh, they could easily do both. So I think that this is a fantastic development, exactly what this uh, what we need within the conurbation. It's in a wonderful location. Families can go there. There's a pub right next door for a for a lovely meal. I think it's a superb a superb development in the perfect area. And I will second Councillor Hall's motion. Thank you for that, Councillor Johnson. Uh, Councillor Wilson. Um, thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, I, I, I think um, 
uh, Councillor Johnson has been beating me to the punch, really. Um, I think it is um, an excellent um, proposal set out. I think, you know, having it to the highest environmental standards is, is fantastic. Um, I, I was going to ask a, a question around uh, the capacity and um, what age groups um, would be like a, what, what age groups is going to be targeted at in terms of education. Um, but but I think it's a brilliant facility. You know, um, I appreciate Councillor O'Neill's uh, some of Councillor O'Neill's points about wanting to enthuse people about local government and, you know, building something near the civic centre and things like this. Um, but I think when, when I was younger, I didn't. <laughs> I didn't want to be near a council building, really. I wanted to be near the beach. I wanted to be near th things like this. And I, I think, um, you know, it will be really quite a fresh and exciting thing for for, for our younger generation uh, coming up. And I think education um, is so key, especially in terms of maintaining our beach. We see we saw over the summer um, what, what went on um, in terms of litter, in terms of, you know, every, and, and a lot of that wasn't necessarily from locals. Um, but I think... I think it's a it's an excellent piece and yeah fully supportive of it. Thank you Councillor Wilson. Councillor Bartlett. Councillor Bartlett. Sorry I thought Councillor uh, Lepovedin was before me but uh, No I've okay. got, got you down first. Okay thanks. Um, yeah I'd be fascinated to understand why Councillor Wilson didn't want to go to council buildings, and now he does. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, I'm, I actually think this this development is is an exciting development, and and it's a great thing, uh, not only for residents but for the visitors as well. It's in a great location, and I think the design is superb. So I echo everything that Councillor Johnson said. Um, the one thing I would like to comment on is about the transport, because if groups are going to be transported, I think probably a minibus is going to get down there and be able to turn around. But certainly a coach couldn't. Um, and probably the only nearest place that a coach could park is on the Jolly Road car park, which unfortunately there are plans to, to build on it. Uh, so that won't be possible. Um, so this is a great shame. Uh, but nevertheless, um, you know, that car park down at Dirty, Dirty China, it's always busy. Uh, it's always busy, you know, from as soon as, as soon as the sun starts shining in the air, any time, it, it, yes, it's full up by about 10 o'clock in the morning. It's it's always very, very busy. Uh, so there, there is an issue about how people visiting in large numbers, if, it, if they come by coach, you know, they're going to have to walk quite a distance because the coach will not be able to, to, to go down, down, down to the car park and turn around. But anyway, outside of that problem, uh, this is a great, great development. And um, as I said, it's an exciting one. So I would support it. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Bartlett. Uh, Councillor Le Pedivin. Thank you, Chair. Um, yes, I went down to have a look in detail yesterday afternoon. Beautiful autumn afternoon. I can thoroughly recommend it. Um, and I, I'm very happy to support this proposal. Um, as I understand it, um, to, to um, possibly answer some of Councillor O'Neill's queries, the main exhibitions are going to be in the, the Beach Hut style pods um, outside. There is the education centre, which is obviously geared up to school groups or youth groups or maybe WIs and things, I don't know, probably suitable for all ages. Um, but I think um, mainly, I may be misinterpreting, but mainly I think it's it's designed to catch people who are already in the area rather than bringing people in specially for this, um, who are probably by definition, if they're making a special journey, interested in the subject and possibly a bit knowledgeable already. This is to catch the people who are down at the beach, who per perhaps are not as um, involved and interested as, shall we say, we are, um, but will hopefully encourage at least a few people to change their thinking and change their behaviour when at the beach and in other outdoor locations, shall we say. Um, the one thing that slightly puzzled me while I was there was, actually, I had a bit of a difficulty identifying the site because it seems to me that quite a few of the buildings have already been demolished. And the thought did occur to me, were we to turn this down today, would they have to be reinstated? I'm glad to say that listening to all the comments, I don't think we are going to turn it down, but um, it was just a query. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> um, 
just before we go move on to a vote, I'm just going to say a couple of words on this. I think it's an excellent use of the seafront. I think some of the buildings we have along the seafront at this moment in time are just slightly past their sell by date. Having a new, modern, interactive style building is exactly what we need to keep our seafront modern and up to date. People sat on the beach, if they get bored, they can nip in there, have a look what it's all about. And we may just be able to teach a few of them the ways of their errors in leaving rubbish on the beach in the future. So, you know, I think the majority of the people that will go there will be walking trade, as it were, going past. We may get minibuses of school kids going down there to learn. I don't think we're going to have any problems with conflicts of people, bearing in mind that between um, August, July and August, there is no cycling on the prom anyway. So there is less traffic down there from that point of view. I think it's well worth the investment that the council is going to make in this. It will modernise the seafront. It will hopefully bring more people down and actually teach them the ways that saves us money by not having to clear 50 odd tonnes of rubbish every weekend. So I am fully in supportive of this and I thank the officers from the seafront services for bringing this one to us. So we will move to the vote on this. I have a move by Councillor Hall, seconded by Councillor Johnson. I'll call names in terms as normal and if you could say for or against please. Uh, Councilor, Councilor, sorry, Councillor Steve Barron's got his hand up, Chair. Sorry, Steve, I didn't see that. Please speak. No, that's OK. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I'm actually talking as a, well, many, many years ago, I was a litter picker on Sandbanks Beach. So uh, I've seen firsthand the, the horrible things and, uh, and, and the, the ramifications of that. So I think it's going to be an excellent educational facility. I think it's a lovely design. Um, it's going to sit very well. Uh, just just to the right of the chime there, and I, I will be supporting it. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Barron. I apologise for not seeing your, your hand raise. Not a problem. So, Councillor McCormack? Four. Councillor Barron? Four. Councillor Bartlett? Four. Councillor Wilson? Four. Councillor Davies? I've, I've not heard all the debate, so I'm not fair to you. Thank you, Councillor Davies, for that clarification. Councillor Decent? Four. Councillor Peter Hall? Councillor Hall? Four. Thank you. Councillor Hilliard? Four. Councillor Johnson? Four. Councillor Lepodobin? Four. Councillor O'Neill? Abstain. Councillor Stribley? Four. And myself also four. Mr. Tyler, could we have the numbers on the doors, please? Yes, certainly, Chairman. Thank you. So the total number of votes for the motion is 11. The total number of votes against the motion is zero. And the total number of abstentions is one. So that motion has carried. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Tyler, and thank you, members, for the debate on that. I think it's a very good application, so look forward to that one being built. With there being no further applications this afternoon, I will call the public side of this meeting to an end and thank everybody for that. If I may ask members to stay online, please. We just have a couple of things to discuss afterwards. Mr. Jones.